just for the listeners, uh, Princess has about five million monthly listeners right now, which you know for a, an independent artist is is insane. Yeah. When did that? When did those numbers start to randomly happen? Or it's not random. Something. Happened. No, it is random. Yeah, but it's still random in the sense that uh, basically Saltburn, this movie that was set in England in 2006, precisely when I was a star last, like in England, um, used it in the party scene, and that shit just went viral. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. Have you? Did you see Saltburn? Yeah. Is, is it pretty good? Uh, it's pretty good. You recommend it? <laughs> I like Barry Keegan a lot. Yeah, he's hot. <laughs> oh yeah, you can move this. Right. Oh yeah, yeah. Any anywhere you want to put that. Day ninety three under the dome with necessities growing dangerously low. Who knows what spark will set off this powder keg? I can't take another minute in this dome. <laughs> Welcome back, folks. The world's greatest freestyle rap and comedy podcast. We're very excited. Special guest, uh, royalty and a superstar, princess superstar. Hello. In the house. Recently, I mean, 20 years of experience in the industry, but recently 30. blown up on 30. The- okay, 30. <laughs> Come on, Dave. I thought you did your research. Probably our oldest guest. I'm going to say that, but you, you look Dave, great. Dave, you got to age me. I want you to age me. <laughs> no, I... Um, the reason that we got to know Princess Superstar is because former guest of the show, Victor Cairo, shout out Victor, is a big fan. Mm-hmm. So he's excited that you're here. Um, but he was like, yo, this lady got bars. You should have her on. And then I saw your um, your Costco free rap. <laughs> and, and then I commented. I was like, you should do Sam's Club Slut next. <laughs> And then that's how we, that's how we. Did the Sam's Club slut ever come into fruition? No, no, that that was just, I was just trying to get her attention in the comments. (laughs) Not yet, not yet, but you never know. But you recently went hyper viral. What's, give us the story. Crazy story. Uh, Let's see. I made a song called Perfect with DJ Mighty Mai in 2005, and it was a hip hop song. Somebody came and took my acapella, put it over like a house Uh classic called Exceder, and that blew up in the UK only. But like in 2006, it was on the pop charts over there. Okay, so this is a long time ago. It blew up. It was a long time ago. I, not that long, but yeah. Well, I saw that the no, it is. the Exceder music video. Well, there was a music video on YouTube from like four years ago. But that's you're saying it was even it was the that that came even before that. Oh yeah, like yeah, and that that thing is not from four years oh, ago. That okay. thing that's is a from re-upload? like 2006. And I'm not even in that video, which is a oh. whole fucking story. No, no, I heard you talking about that on either TikTok or Instagram, where they just they put these random models in it, and then they. Did they toured with them? Yeah, it was so weird. Like, they did that. Um, they did that in the nineties to that. The yeah, Millie black Vanilli. Lady. Oh. oh no, no, no. There was um, what's it? Oh uh, yes, I know what you're talking about. Who was that that they did that to? Horrible. Was, yeah, yeah. It was some like fitness, big fitness song or whatever. But I can't remember the name. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so really, I knew the reference. When when Perfect came out, did were you on a record label or were you independent? Yeah, I was on a a label in Germany called K Seven. And that contract's over. Oh yeah. I got all my masters back, which is amazing. So you own the perfect master. Yeah, I do. That's crazy. <laughs> so now you're, and now just for the listeners, uh, Princess has about five million monthly listeners right now, which, you know, for a, an independent artist is, is insane. Yeah. When did that when did those numbers start to randomly happen or it's not random? Something. No, happened. it is. Ran- yeah, but it's still random in the sense that uh, basically Saltburn, this movie that was set in England in 2006, precisely when I was a star last like in England, um, used it in the party scene and that shit just went viral. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. Have you did you see Saltburn? Yeah. Is it pretty good? Uh, it's pretty good. You recommend it? <laughs> I like Barry Keegan a lot. Yeah, he's hot. <laughs> Wait, so the... I don't get it. Okay. Shout out to mm, Barry. He is very perfect, can't you see? And you know that they use the music in the movie. And so we're talking to this beauty. Uh, Shout out my dude, Barry. I might go make a protein shake and add some berries. Uh, Yeah, the idea is really scary. Mm, yeah, my arms are hairy. Yo, I like it when at the end his dick is swinging. Here I'm singing on the mic. Shout out to Sophie Ellis Baxter, 
Murder in the dance floor like you like it. Apparently, Barry is hung, yo. And they played that song that she sung, bro. And you know that it's blowing up, yo, yo, yo. So I throw that shit up, oh. Shout out to my hung brethren. Uh, yeah, go forgive me, reverend. Uh, yeah, I've been uh, spitting, smitten by this little kitten. Woo! Nice. Damn. Just made a banger in like two seconds. Not bad. Not right, bad for the first time. Okay start. Yeah. Okay start. Yeah. Acceptable. <laughs> um, okay, so the the song pops off from the scene in that movie, but that's 2006. Uh, yeah, 2006. Uh, but the, yeah, the movie's set in 2006, so that's the whole soundtrack oh. is like 2000s. Oh, it's set in 2006. That's right. So when did the movie come out for real? Just just yeah. over Christmas. David. David doesn't even know I'm what sorry. this movie I'm is. I'm sorry. That's all right. That's all I, right. I know. I He's, know. It, I seen the movie poster. I just didn't know it was recent they, but, Barry Keegan wasn't even alive in 2006 no, whatever. I'm pretty sure he I was didn't, I didn't live in the US in 2006 <laughs> but it's okay I mean this movie has now gone completely bananas viral and with it my song went viral too and it's such a blessing and an amazing thing to write a song 17 years ago Wow! and then all of a sudden blow up and sort of get all my career handed back to me so I want it like a vindication or is it like how would you uh, describe, like, there's no, um, yeah, yeah, definitely. It is like a vindication in a way because, you know, I um, I basically, like, had a lot of success in the 2000s and then sort of, uh, like, dropped off and then I was sort of obscure, but I kept making music. It's just that nobody was listening to it. And now it's sort of like, oh, yeah, like, I love you. <laughs> like, you know, and I was always listening to you. And that, that, yeah. the song Perfect is perfect for the the tiktok uh like environment i think yeah I've, I've 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 heard it like three times this week and not even on tiktok it'll just be on reels and my god you should see some of the reels that get recommended to me <laughs> it is it is monstrous but there it is your song in the background of uh, <laughs> well yeah and it's the weirdest thing like what's it's gone viral on instagram and tiktok and it's like you have everything from like Bratz dolls to like today I saw like a bone medication Damn, <laughs> like, you know yeah, and it's yep. just like I guess everyone likes that lyric watch me work it that, no. I'm perfect and it is it's for this era I get, I get like de deformed people recommended to me in my his, reels. his feet that, his feet is messed up yeah it's so weird yeah it'll be some guy with like a face that's like the size of like this lamp here <laughs> and it'll be perfect playing in the background because you know what <laughs> we're not ableist here we don't care if you're deformed you're perfect in our eyes i wanted to ask uh did, was there a period so that the contract with the german label ends and then you're still making music but you kind of lose a little bit of steam yeah was there a point like a couple years ago where you were like fuck it i'm just doing this because you were still based on what I've, I've heard you say on the internet you were still getting a decent amount of listens like you had a fan base that was still listening to your music it just wasn't like so here's huge. the thing here's the thing i had yeah i had six hundred thousand monthly listeners which is amazing on paper for, but the thing is check this out it was for one song it was for perfect exceder only it was only that song. so the catalog and wasn't doing numbers. no and i was like putting out music and like you know kept going and like literally would have like a thousand streams like i'm not even kidding so it was like a really weird like disconnect in my you know but i mean i'm not complaining i hate it when like artists is, complain is but. there like a sure. desire to sort of prove yourself outside of that one song it, like, is that it I gotta know, is perfect all it is, or do you got a whole bunch of other songs? Yeah, I just wanna listen to them all, and hear them, and then, yo, uh, yo, sing them at the mall. Yeah, I'm about to go to a club and listen to perfect, yeah, and, and watch some ladies work it. Yeah, it ain't the jerk shit, yeah, uh, I'm eating jerk chicken in the kitchen. Look, I got a whole catalog. Ooh. Please, just listen to my songs. Please. Please, just listen along. I got a lot of songs, and you have to listen to other songs. I went to the perfect album on Spotify, and I saw it with all my eyes. There's like 15 different remixes of the perfect song on that one CD, kids. Yeah, hella remixes. Yeah. Too many remixes. <laughs> nah, there's never too many remixes, because it's always the new shit for the kids, and then... <laughs> Uh, that was yeah. I noticed that, and I was like, uh, I, I feel like that was kind of um, par for the course. For would you say? I, I, I almost don't want to say EDM, uh, but would, what, it's like what, dance like, music. 
I don't know yeah. what like genre would you like put oh, that in. Oh god, like, you know, listen, like uh when I hear EDM, I'm like, uh, uh, no, yeah. no, 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 no. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because okay, Me too. first of all, I come from hip hop first, right? Mm-hmm. And then er, during the early 2000s, I got really into it's called electro. That's what it was called. It was called electro and that was a mishmash of hip hop, electronic, house, fucking punk, techno, like everything. Yeah. It was so dope. And then somehow it like turned into like this weird EDM thing. But anyways. EDM is almost like a slur for this type of music. That's yeah. right. Okay. That's right. You're, you're up on your shit. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I knew that because uh, I, I have some friends who are really into like modern EDM. Very but, into but the, it. The community um, will be offended if you call something EDM that is not EDM and whatnot. So I'm just like, oh my I'm, goodness. And I'll, be, and I'll be offended if you, because I call it electro and that was the yes. pure electro of the 2000s. EDM is like pop music of electro. I, I yes. don't know. Even when you start saying shit like that, people will be like, fuck you, man. How dare you try and <laughs> put me in a box? I wanted to ask, what about, um? because you were really popping for, for a while and... I was on I was on YouTube and found your song with Moby mm-hmm. and it's on his page, which Moby's doing a podcast now, by the way. That's I feel like shifting from music into pod. You have to podcast first. I don't what? going from music to podcast. I, whatever. You know what? Moby's, what do you mean? I like Moby. No, I, no. I think that the, 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 the typical uh, is shift from fame to podcasting, which Moby has done. So no, it's like, true. Let's <laughs> I, the, what I was going to say is. He has the the lift me up song on YouTube that does twenty million views, twenty eight million views, and then like two videos later, it's the video with you in it. What was like working with him? Like he was popping at that time. Like he was like yeah. at the top when you guys worked together. Did he right? force you to pick a side in the Eminem beef? <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna pick Eminem. <laughs> I I love I love Moby but um, yeah that was cool basically what happened was there was a song that he did that's called there's a it's a jam for the ladies and a superstar and then somebody at his label was like oh superstar your name is superstar you should get on it that does make sense yes and then so I got on it and we did that really fun video with like monkeys no, you yeah, and there's a, and there's a turtle break dancing in it. What? Yeah, it's hilarious. And finger skateboarding. Yes, tech decks. That well, I, it, it's funny because that electro sound it does kind of the Moby falls under that kind of category, wouldn't you say? Um, sort of. I feel like Moby has his own category of like making music for movies and making billions of dollars. Oh my god, <laughs> that's it's true. where he's at right now. Now you know Him what? And, uh, what's the nine inch nails do? They're just making. I should take. Music. I should take back what I said about shifting into podcasting. Moby's probably doing that for fun. Yeah, I mean He's, that's just like what we're doing. Come on. Well, I'm just saying there's <laughs> there are there are people that I've seen who become successful and then they're like, oh, I'm gonna podcast to get paid. So like the intention behind why you start podcasting is what's insulting to Maybe me. Maybe he's got a really good, a lot of really good like fitness advice. I don't know. He it, guys, I, I mean, I hate to say anything, but literally, I saw like Hunter Biden on his podcast, and we're not gonna go there. But I was whoa. like, ew, damn. <laughs> hmm. Moby's plat Moby's platforming Hunter Biden. Well, did he ask the tough questions like, "Where's the laptop? <laughs> How are the crack hoes? I don't think so. Is um is Moby in L.A.? Mm-hmm. So you were Moby's in a part of L.A. that like, you know, like normal people don't live in the Palisades. <laughs> no, it's uh, like extra. I'm not going to dox. No, him. no, don't dox. Him, yeah. <laughs> it's SeaWorld. Yeah. yeah. Right? <laughs> um, <laughs> well, so that you worked with Moby and then like um, what was the I wanted to ask about the period after like because you had you had a kid and then you start going through like real life shit. And but then you kind of come back and, and start putting out music again. Was there a period where you're like, we're just you sort of put your hands up and said, fuck this. I don't care if I'm famous again. I'm just doing this for fun. Yo, oh. I don't give a shit anymore. No, I'm a do this for the pimps and the whores. Okay. Oh, I'm ain't doing this for the awards. No, nope. it ain't feel that bad. It don't feel like a chore. It ain't feeling bad no more. Yo, you know I am at home. Yeah, I wanna make this shit and then go on the podcast dome Yeah, I'm Princess Whoa. Superstar Yeah, you know my reach is far Yeah, you know I'm on TikTok and yeah, my song is going hard Yo, I don't give a shit about the Grammys No nope. I just wanna be at home, I'm a mammy nah. Yo, yeah. Yo, I'm breastfeeding my kid Hell yeah And about music, I don't give a shit uh. 
Yeah, breastfeeding is my number one Do it to my daughter and my son okay. They think it's lots of fun yeah. When they're two or one yeah. But then they turn five yeah. And they're like, yo, okay, you need to start Eating real food, my guy <laughs> <laughs> that was good. I, I really appreciated hearing you freestyling about breastfeeding. <laughs> that was that's, good. That's that's why that's why we're so passionate about this show. The the subject of the freestyles can go off the rails. No, I was gonna say, did you? Because there's a song that you put out. I think it was like two years ago, or the videos on YouTube from two years ago. There's some shirtless dudes, and I forget the title, but you're like talking about like, what do I do now? Like, oh, who am I now? That it's kind of like a, a a song about. Having popped off, but now I'm not as popping, and the, like, there's like that dilemma of not being as famous or successful as you previously were. But did you just did you accept it, or did you feel like you had failed? Well, all of it, all of it. So, and I put it into song because I was like, oh God, like am I washed up now? Like every time I was going down to write, I would be like, oh, nobody cares about me anymore. I'm probably washed up. So I was like, fuck it, I'll put it in a song. Like put your pain into the song, you know. And so that's what I did. Yeah. Is it? Is it all? And then and then nobody listened to. It. <laughs> More people listen. They were like, oh. <laughs> All right, I'm going to go listen to Perfect over here. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's hard. That's tough. It's tough to get people to... I think that you do have an opportunity now to shift your focus onto uh, making music content on TikTok and Instagram because your page now has that attention. And honestly, I'll send you some links. There's some, there's some dudes spitting game on the internet about how to do music marketing successfully, and I think that you could do it I mean, you're already going hella viral, so now you just apply the same strategy to other songs, and it's likely to do the same thing. I feel like... Yeah, I mean, this is the thing. What's amazing now is that I have an audience that wants to hear new music and wants to, you know, so... Yeah, yeah exactly. That's or you could you could also promote other songs that are already made. Yeah. It, you don't... It, obviously, make new music follow your heart but um well yeah because i like i have one that i think really would pop off which is about getting older and it's called getting older parentheses pussy still pop mm. I, I saw that video that video is really great who who made that video oh yeah this woman Mon monica she's amazing so yeah. is every is everything self-funded are you funding? yeah it? that's why it looks so cheap no it looks <laughs> what are you talking about it looks professional i thought that looked super professional it looks like oh thank you you can tell it has a budget there's some shirtless guys in it. I feel like it's hard to find shirtless guys. He's yeah. Like he, it sounds like he really likes the shirtless guys. <laughs> thing. This is the second when, time. Well, there's shirtless guys in all the videos. I'm like, uh, where, where, uh, if, if, a, if a shirtless guy tells David to do something, he does it I'm like, like that. yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> no, he, um, uh, it's, it's, it's because, uh, well, you know, David and I are, are both into a fitness a little bit. And I think that David's, you know, he's got his eyes on the prize. He sees this guy and he's like, that's going to be me in yeah, a year. I'm going to be shirtless in a video one day. Oh, hell yeah. Actually, I've been shirtless in a video, but I had a mask on, so I was incognito. Oh, I forgot about that. <laughs> he was also about 100 pounds lighter. It was a, it was a different <laughs> well, time. Well, the funny thing is about Perfect, it's like literally like on all the gym playlists. Yes. I was going to say that because I just put it on my gym playlist the other day. I was like, you know what? This is going on there because it was I would, during my research period because I, I recognized the song, too. When I we were like, well, we're going to have Princess Superstar on. I was like, do I know Princess Superstar? And I, and I swear to God, like I played the song and I'm like, OK, yeah, absolutely. I remember this fully. I, I saw that you um you posted a collaborative post with TuneCore, which we use TuneCore, mm -hmm. and what was what was that like? Did they call you and they say, hey, princess, you're doing numbers. Now we're friends or like what was that conversation? like? Yeah, that was exactly the conversation. <laughs> well, you know, it's not a it's not the worst conversation. We didn't care about you at six hundred and sixty K, but we care at five mil now. It was kind of that. But I mean, I don't blame them because it's like if you're it's a business. Yeah, and if you're a distributor and, you know, you have millions of people, like, how are you going to give attention to everybody? Exactly. No, that makes sense. Well, so did you go to, like, their office or something? Yeah, I went to their office, and they had me come speak in an event. Then they invited me to, like, Grammy parties that they were going to. It so was sick. Oh. Yo, so what you're saying is you were at the Grammys today, and then you were over there at the TuneCore studio, and you know you getting more. Yeah, I'm at the Grammys. I just took a plan B, because last night got crazy, and I'm kind of lazy. Shout out to TuneCore. We stay independent. Uh-huh. 
We don't need anybody. Nope. We don't need majors. We don't need shit. No. Nah, they send me the checks, bruh. Yeah, cause you know I'm blowing up, cuh. Yeah, you can catch me at Tune Corp. Mm, yeah, you know I fly, yeah, I soar. I get them direct deposit straight to my PayPal. PayPal. Hanging out with all my friends and also with my pal. I go make some money real directly from Tune Corp. Tune Corp. Yeah, you is a bitch, you don't know shit, you is a whore. You okay. a whore. Oh, you're just a dumb little whore. I feel so bad for your husband who can't hear the beats. <laughs> <laughs> he just hears us saying dumb shit. But, but no, we're like making hits over here. I love you guys. I like that one. That one was that, pretty that was good. Not bad, not bad. It was like actually a song. No, no I, I, every now and then we, we start singing and it's from the heart. <laughs> It's true. It, you can tell when you get into a groove. Too. Tune core and whore. Oh yeah. Yeah, we've, I think we've yeah, we've we've, we've, bring, we've been bringing up whore a lot. I'm right? a hack. I, and I don't want to say I'm it's because we have a female guest, but if yeah, part yeah. Of no, because you know why? I know why. It's because whore rhymes with everything. Yeah, yeah. it does. That's yeah, the yeah, problem. Whore, door, floor, more, yeah. bore. Yep. You could rhyme orange with whore, a whore binge. Orange. <laughs> Wait, I did want to say this uh, because you brought up Eminem insulting Moby, which I do think it's funny that Eminem insults people who aren't even in rap. He's like, yeah. I'm just, I'm just going to insult this guy who can't make a, a diss track back at me. Like, Moby's like going to. a wimp. <laughs> yeah, Moby's going to do an acoustic track back at Eminem. Eminem, you suck. You're a stupid bitch. Hey, uh, Mo Moby fired first. Yeah, just got to say. Te technically, te whatever. But oh um, I feel like, I think Eminem is like the same age as you. And he was coming up in hip hop as you were coming up. It's true. Like, uh, do you feel like the burden of being a white rapper like he did? Uh, a white female rapper. Uh, <laughs> there aren't that many white female rappers. It's so hard to like be in 2024 and be like, yes, it's hard to be a white rapper. <laughs> you know, it's like, no. <laughs> I mean, it's just. It, it I think. I think the problem with white rappers is you know, they they start off a little genuine, and then once they get a little clout, they start to believe their own bullshit, mm -hmm. and they kind of turn into like what The Rock turned into as an actor. Um, whereas if you know, oh yeah, The Rock used to be in fun movies that people loved, but now he's just like he has to Black be a Adam. superhero and yeah, everything. Right. That even when he's not, he doesn't have powers or whatever. It seems like he does. And I think that um, a lot of of white rappers specifically they're like oh my goodness now i'm all of a sudden accepted in this kind of like serious community here and i'm i'm just like everyone else that raps and it's and yeah it it, it they tank themselves with that's that why attitude. i really like being a rapper who also like goes across different genres because like i don't feel like i have to um you know you don't have to rap every time yeah, I don't have to rap every time. And also, I don't have to, like, fit into a box. So, like, it's like I do identify as a rapper first. That's what I started with in the 90s. Uh, and I came up with, like, you know, Prince Paul, De La Soul, and, like, I you know, Raucous Records, all that shit. Same as, you know, Eminem and all that. But, like, I don't, I don't know. I don't feel like I have to conform to, like, hip-hop, whatever. I sure. just... Yeah, I just do my thing. I just make music. That's kind of like the same vibe we're going for, or we at least try to go for. There's usually a hip hop element inserted somewhere, but we try and we try and keep it fresh. I yeah. think that the best music is something that sounds like something you've never heard before. Exactly. Even if it is in the same genre of something that you have heard before, I like every time I'm like surprised by a song, that's when I know the song is good. I'm just like, oh, okay, whoa, I didn't expect that. Okay, why'd you leave? Why'd you leave New York? Um, well, we were like in a one bedroom with our daughter and we were just like looking at like, we're like, oh, well, we could move to like Jersey or something. But like that just seems depressing. So yeah. everybody was like, come to L.A. And Moby, too. Moby was like, come to L.A. It's better. And I'm like, oh, God, I'll never move to L.A. It's lame. But I did. And it's not lame. It's, yeah, it's, it's nice, so chill. It's nice having the the sun out every day for the most part. Primarily out. It, there's also pockets of LA. Like you could say LA sucks, and then you're like, well, what part of LA are you talking about? Right. Because it, it's like which a pocket? Which pocket? is it? The back pocket. So we decided to move to Santa Monica because we wanted the ocean. But literally, it's like the Stepford Wives over there. I'm like, I just feel it's tough. It's like so strange. I mean, as a mother, it's fucking great. Like, do you ever go like, on next door? Uh, yeah, I have. <laughs> the, I imagine the next door app over there is, is uh, Daniel Tosh on his podcast was did a little bit about next door where he lives and he lives in Malibu and uh, the, the the affluent folks of the area. 
yo. Log on to next door, and you know the next thing you know, there is a whore, and that's why I'm logging on this app so I can check it out and, and get check her my that. ass. <laughs> oh, whoa, check my ass on next door. Yeah, I'm I'm floored, yo, because my neighbor's hella affluent. Yeah, they don't speak languages; they're not fluent. Fuck. I'm chilling in Santa Monica. Uh-huh. I'm just looking on next door, and I see that my neighbor is mad because it's 11 o'clock, and they still making mad music. What's up with these kids playing outside? <laughs> What the heck, I don't like them over there riding on their little bikes. I don't trust them, they should go take a hike. Yo, I love all my neighbors, whether they're Hispanic or gay nerds. Uh, <laughs> yeah, or they hate birds. <laughs> Fuck birds. Aw. No, I'm, I'm actually pro bird. I love birds. <laughs> I hope you're pro bird, because, yeah, I have two parakeets. Oh, that's awesome. Oh. Uh, mm-hmm. My girlfriend has a conure. Ooh, I like that. It's, it's it's got it's not, a, so it's not a parakeet. I, no. I think it's a it's called conure. They're all just glorified parakeets no, in my eyes. No, conure is like a real big thick bird. Well, no, it's no, it's, it's, it's a it's, she's a little bird like this. Oh, she's a conure. Maybe, maybe I, she was the runt of the litter. Does I don't that know. Happen with they were like, maybe maybe I'm saying the wrong word. <laughs> but you're a con man. Right yeah, now. yeah. She's a maybe sm- it's a cunt tour. Oh, <laughs> fucking bitch ass bird. I heard those got uh, a big beak on them. <laughs> okay. Because they because they yap a lot. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Uh, that's uh, that's actually evidence of microevolution, David. I don't oh know yeah. You, have you uh, ever read Darwin? No, no, no. I'm a creationist, so. <laughs> Damn. Uh, I'm gonna go pee real quick. Okay. Sorry. No, well, we can handle it. All right, we I'm, can I'm, we can run this. No, yeah, for sure. I mostly run this, honestly, <laughs> while while he's gone. Um, no, so you you move to LA, and when you do that, it's like, are you family first at that point? Like focused on. Your personal life, or do you come in and you're like, I'm getting in the business? Oh, God, no. I, it was really family first because okay. uh, I didn't know what the business was over here at all. I'm like a really bona fide New Yorker. So I was like, I thought maybe everyone was just in Hollywood over here. Sure. So, but I, I think that's actually not the case. There's so many fucking real people outside yeah. of Hollywood. Hollywood's pretty goofy and weird. <laughs> Which I'm sure you've experienced recently. Did yeah. you go to some of these Grammy parties? I did, yeah. What's that like? Oh, it was goofy and weird. But did, <laughs> did you like, were you, were you like getting high or something? Or were you just like feeling weird interacting with strangers? I mean, I was definitely interacting with like a lot of celebrities. Really? And that was kind of strange. But the best one um, was uh, uh, Le Freak, Nile Rogers. I got to like okay. hug him. Wow. And I was really excited good about hug. that one. That was a good hug. That's nice. Yeah. De- yeah. Decent hug. Decent hug. It's meaningful. From Nile Re- Rogers, you know, Le Freak. So, Freak out. So what What are you doing at the party? You're just hanging out? Yeah, you just hang out and you like suck your stomach in and try uh, to look really good. I've been doing that my whole <laughs> life, so I know what that's like. Um, who reaches out to you about that stuff? Like TuneCore. TuneCore is like, hey, come to this party. Yeah, and then, and then a different party with somebody else, like a friend of mine. Yeah. Um, you know, she was like, so there's the big party is the Clive Davis party. OK. And that's what like every every star wants to go to. And my friend was like, why don't you just um, it's at the Beverly Hilton. Why don't we just come and hang out in the Beverly Hilton? Because everybody just hangs out there anyway and then goes to the party. And I was like, OK, cool. Um, because I wasn't on the guest list. So oh. I that's that. So I hung out. And, um, Wait, so you're invited to the party, but you're not on the guest list? No, no, I'm not invited oh. to the party. I'm, I, my friend invited me to the hotel. So it's like crashing the Clive Davis oh. party. And then um, my husband came with me, and he was really excited because Ted Danson walked in. Whoa. And then, fuck with Ted. Uh-huh. And then Dua Lipa and Kylie Minogue and um, Lana Del Rey, which, you know, I, Kylie I know Kylie Minogue. Her. I, that, um, last summer, that, that song that she dropped was super hot. I can't remember it now, though. Um, Padump. Oh but, yeah, but um, that was good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, so anyway, so we crashed that party and it was really fun. Um I think Ted Danson was the highlight. Ted Danson. <laughs> Bro, Ted Danson has had such a wild friggin' career. Ups and downs. <laughs> yeah, let, one could argue there's some ups and downs. <laughs> uh, what about I what about the um I saw the clip of you wearing a fancy dress, camera guys. What's what was that? I mean, that, that's all. That's me just dropping off at school. Like, I don't that's know. What I'm talking about. Come on. If she's used to the the paparazzi flooding yeah. every time she got to sure, drop yeah, her kid yeah, off. Come on. Um. So so you're not gonna let me know what that was. 
But I don't know. I don't know because I wore so many fancy dresses oh, and yeah. so many red you, carpets. It was a pretty vague question. No, no. That, the... I, it's a post from recently. It's like a pink dress on a red carpet. Okay. There was a couple a couple different ones. One was Music Cares, which was an, uh, an organization that helps musicians when they're like down and out. Which, uh, by the way, here's the irony. They help pay my rent during COVID. <laughs> No way. And then now I'm there at their gala, like in a fancy dress on the red carpet. That's crazy. Isn't like uh, is the, the the wife of one of the Beastie Boys is really involved in that. Oh, maybe T- Tamara yeah, Davis. Yeah. She's amazing. <clears throat> yeah. Interesting. Okay. Well, that's cool. Uh, are there a bunch of opportunities? Oh. Yo. Out of nowhere. That's I'm just curious. <laughs> since you're furious, virality, has there been some curious execs trying to you know, get some attention financially. They want to know what's next from what's the next? princess. Yo, and that's me smoking on the best weed over here. And I need to know, yo, what's on the horizon for thee? Well, I've been talking to Harry Weinstein. Woo. <laughs> <laughs> All I don't right. know where I was going with that. You know that Harvey, <laughs> Harvey. he's got a pretty big uh, money. Okay, uh, I've wow. been talking to Harvey Weinstein. He said, come on, get up on my peen. And I said, no, dude, I'm just making music for me, and that's what I've been doing, me. Uh, yeah, now I'm fucking Harvey so I can get on the next movie. Me and Hollywood can do what we really should. Damn. So look out for Princess Superstar in the next Tarantino film. And folks. Harvey's Morning Wood. <laughs> Ooh, I've heard, man, one of the, my favorite parts about that whole Harvey Weinstein thing was how many women were talking about how fucked up his penis was. There were, oh. there was a bunch of women that were like, yeah, you know, I wouldn't even really describe it as a penis. It was more <laughs> just like a lump of cells that grew <laughs> on the side of a sewer wall. Damn. <laughs> yeah, apparently he had a really fucked up wiener. Maybe that's why so many people came forward. If there was, he, you know, if there he had was a like, nice penis, that might, people yeah. might have let it slide. They, were, like, they would want to ride that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. There would be no Me Too movement if he was a good leg. Yeah. It, <laughs> it was like a major piece of evidence in getting him convicted. Well, a, a minor of, piece of evidence. <laughs> ah, there we go. Oh, but um, bump. Uh, I love that clip of um, Rose McGowan going like, and yes, obviously I'm very fucking brave. <laughs> Here's the thing, like I, I, and I'll probably get in trouble for this, but like, why the hell did those girls go up to his hotel room in the fucking first place? It's because they want to be famous. Everybody wants exactly. to be famous. That's a disease. It's just it, it, obviously that's one hundred percent the thing. If you wanted to not fuck him, you just don't go up there. But then you know the business is fucked up, power dynamics. You know, like you, you can fucking well in twenty twenty four, you go up there to get that dirt. You know what I mean? You oh. go up there just so now I can fucking cancel Harvey Weinstein. Yeah, you pull up in your phones out recording yeah, yeah, and shit. Yeah. Although Everybody wants to what's do that. what's weird is um you would think that uh, cuz I feel like Rose McGowan hasn't had like a resurgence in, in her career since then. Um, so it almost seems like she still was punished, even though she came forward with all that crap. Well, yeah, because now the, I, the, I, I didn't mean to bring it down. To the <laughs> <laughs> then now the rest of Hollywood doesn't want to work with her. They're like, oh, we're not going to be able to fuck her. I don't yeah. want to have her in my movie. <laughs> well, you know. <laughs> Put out if you want to be in these flicks. No, I'm just oh, kidding. Geez. No, just kidding. No, it's, it's fucked um, up world. It's a fucked up world. We got to get out of this. How about this? No, no. I, I was asking her about if she was going to like collab with people, if she got new shit coming up. You know, is, is there something that is about to happen that's sick? Yes. Yes. Um, I have a new song called New Renegades coming out, um, but I, I got to wait to put it out because basically David Guetta just did a remix of Perfect. <laughs> like a big heavy number hitter. 22 <laughs> yeah number 22 but you know it's a big deal but anyways of course, the label the David Guetta. <laughs> yeah exactly he so. used to date selena gomez for yeah. god's sakes that's not that's not his biggest claim to fame obviously okay <laughs> well he was recently voted like number one dj in the whole world or something he's got that doesn't surprise me extensive all, yeah. career yeah yeah but that. anyways i can't do anything until like you know the label and everybody like told me that like i can't do anything while this is like charting and everything like you have to let it his label well no okay so also just to be clear i own the perfect master and then there's a record label that is running Perfect Exceder. So gotcha. there is a label called Armada. Interesting. Yeah. That's involved. Yeah. That's involved. But you don't have like an exclusive contract no, or anything like that. No. 
Be, huh. and, uh, because the exceder is somebody else. It's That's almost right. like it's Mason. Yeah. It's like perfect is the Spider-Man property, and then you've got Sony and Disney sort of sharing this uh, this, this this character. Many people right? involved. Yeah, it's kind of like that. <laughs> It's a good, it's a good analogy. It's a good yeah. analogy <laughs> for lovers of you're Spider-Man. Welcome. <laughs> so you're 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 riding it out uh, while David Guetta puts you in the spotlight even further. Yeah, um, is uh, Renegades a single? Yeah, New Renegades is a single. It's really dope. I really like it, and I'm excited. Man, so like, uh, you don't have a manager, somebody like a middleman. I did just get a manager. Okay, which is exciting because like I didn't have one. You know, I had one back in the day. Yeah. And then none. And now I do again, which is amazing. So I'm sure the manager is making moves. He's he is. To- He's so good. He's in England. So it's like I'm pretty much like I'm way more famous in England, even though I'm from New York. It's just this weird thing that happened. <laughs> oh, there we go. They know that I'm famous overseas. Yeah, in England where they drinking teas. Yeah, if you please, I need me a crumpet. I'm on the princess superstar trumpet. Isn't it? They love me in the UK. Okay. Uh, you say, uh, you say, Bob, I'm a smoke a bowl of something uh, green. Uh, right, bro. They love me in the UK like the office. Love me. They told me to get off it. Ooh. I said no. I'm never going up over here. Never. I'm just gonna go over there and drink beer. Except for I don't really drink anymore. Okay. And you know, I'm not a whore. Nope. No whore. But in England, I walk the streets like, cause I'm drinking tea. Yes, you know me. I'm know over me. here in Liverpool. That's where I'm at, you fool. I guess it's gonna change to Australian eventually. Fuck. That's how all my accents be. That's his main accent, is the Australian. Australian. I can't do other accents, it ruined my ability. Yeah. do. It's it's kinda just always turns into this, no matter what. Even if I'm even if I'm I can't even do any other accent. It's, it's solid. Like, it's I a, saw you on the on the, your other podcast doing like Australian. T- you had an Australian. Yeah, yeah. Guest. I, w- I got vindicated. That was yeah. it was a good feeling when he told me that it was pretty good. You it's know? like perfect. You <laughs> got you got vindicated. I Woo! will say this: I appre- uh, most of the people, ninety nine percent of the people we have on, do zero research or it, like it, <laughs> have zero insight on what the show is. Half of the people come on don't know that we're gonna freestyle, uh. even though I let them know. I'm like, hey, we're going to freestyle. You don't have to free, but, you know, it's, it's what it is. And then the freestyles come in and they're like, oh, so this is. I'm like, yeah, dude, I gave you info. <laughs> so we really appreciate you, like, doing some, you know, digging Attempt. <laughs> on what the what it, the thing is. It, it, you end up looking a lot worse if you don't participate. There is the a spontaneity <laughs> element to it where you come in blind. It's like when you watch a movie without having seen the trailer where you just kind of you. it allows you to be fresh with it. But, you know, we appreciate you giving a shit a little bit. What about, um, fuck, I had a thing and I lost it. Uh, we could talk about Madam Web. Okay, talk. <laughs> what, what's that? What's up with that? I don't know. I've just been kind of fascinated with this movie came out. That's why I was talking about Spider-Man earlier. Oh. Cause, so Madam Web is apparently really shitty. It just dropped and everyone's hating on it. Um, and uh, a, a big part of it is that it's not a Disney Marvel movie. It is a Sony Spider-Man movie oh. because because Disney and Marvel and Sony have this sort of deal worked out where Marvel can use Spider-Man for the Avengers and whatnot. And, and, and so Disney has like the rights to that. But Sony's still allowed to make movies using auxiliary Spider-Man characters. So they're making this Madam Web movie with Dakota Johnson and Sidney Sweeney. What's so funny about it is that there's evidence to show that maybe Sidney Sweeney and Dakota Johnson thought that it was a Disney Marvel oh. Spider-Man movie. Oh, so they signed on with the lack of awareness. Yes, and immediately after the first trailer dropped, Dakota Johnson fired her agent oh. and, and got an, assigned to a completely new talent agency. And uh, it was heavily marketed as like the Spider Girl movie kind of thing, but and it wasn't. And they show like Sydney Sweeney in the Spider Girl outfit. There's two other Spider Women as well that are in Spider Men, Spider Women outfits. But the, it doesn't happen in the movie. It was tra- bait in the trailer. Apparently, in the film, the only time the girls are in the spider suits is in some like 
vision of the future that happens for just a couple of seconds. Oh no, but not this not being in the <laughs> spider suits. They have to be in the that was, spider suits. No, but suits. literally right. that was like the movie's only saving grace was that right, S- Sydney see- Sweeney was gonna be in a skin tight spider suit at and the end of the day. You could see the outline of the boobs. No, that's yeah, what that's talking what I mean. about skin tight fit. That's the whole point. And it just and it never <laughs> came to fruition and it's just a bizarre thing because uh movie studios are writing off they're just they're throwing movies that have already been made in the trash as tax write-offs lately they did it with batgirl it was fully completed they had a few bad test screenings so they're like hey well whatever we can recoup some money by just calling it a tax write-off movie's done in the trash gone damn they do that with movies that are done that are actually might be good they just did it with coyote versus acme or they can't whatever. just sell it to netflix or hulu and get a bag off of that apparently not apparently it's more worth it for them to just throw the movie in the trash <laughs> you could hear richard <laughs> get, getting mad at playing we, apex we have a roommate play, playing video games <laughs> in the next. he's pro pod he supports the pod <laughs> but um that it sucks may, it seems like for all intents and purposes this movie should have been a tax write It's way too much work to throw a, a fucking movie away. Like It's like if we record a whole episode, and that's way less work than a movie. Doing this for like an hour and then not putting it out would devastate me. Sometimes we record for like a, 30 minutes, and then he's like, oh, we weren't recording, and that breaks my heart. <laughs> that's okay, not happening. We're good. We're that's good. not happening in this situation. <laughs> oh, my God. I'd be so mad. <laughs> Dude, I wanted to. No, it has happened before. It happened one time. We had our we had a guy, uh, Jamaican, on who's got he's pretty big in Jamaica. That's his mask and right so, there. <laughs> and so we were like, luckily it, we were only two beats in, so we were able to pretty seamlessly restart, and it wasn't a big deal. But yeah, he was cool with it. He was like, we're almost like cloud. we're almost done with this episode. That would be a nightmare. We would just have to be like, all right, well, we'll get you on the next one. Time Good flies test. when when we're having a blast. I wanted to tell you guys about this. Um, my my girlfriend's ex is. Fiance is a vegan and she wants to share her, you know, pastries with me and the little dude that we all look after. But, you know, after you eat them, you don't feel laughter. Yo, if I'm a vegan, I can't eat them pastries. No. Yo, so please get that shit away from me. Yes. I don't have it. Yo, my shit is all plant based, you see. And if you feed me that, yo, I'll be erased, you see. I used to be vegan. Really? Now I identify as a chicken. Oh. That means I cheat. I eat meat once in a while. My iron is low, but I ain't a hoe. Woo! Yeah, the health consequences of veganism are not ideal for the humanism. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can't rhyme more things with ism. Communism. Mm. Is a bad, you know, way to run a society. Yeah, 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 yeah. For the most part. For no, sure. yeah, yeah. so it almost <laughs> always implodes. And she's and vegan, and you, it, she seems as if she may be low iron as well. And I, I'm cool. I'm cool with vegans. You do need to do a, a serious amount of supplementation to maintain your nutrition. And which, obviously, if I'm speaking on this, it doesn't matter because I'm fat. So I, my nutrition <laughs> is out of whack. It's irrelevant. But. This. I don't get the whole iron thing. Like, what's a like, because there's iron in meat, and it's hard to get iron, supplement like enough iron. They from should, co- other they should have a different name for it though, because well, I just think of like pumping iron. Oh you know yeah, what yeah, I mean Arnold. Yeah, <laughs> there's Call- a ton, there's a ton of iron in steak, it, but it, and yeah. it is and it's iron iron. When like you, it's the metal. The, no, no, it's the <laughs> it's the. Uh, the table of elements. That's iron. what I mean. I mean, I tried. I, I, you know, they say like if you eat spinach and seaweed and take iron but supplements. I did it. all of that, but I was still like anemic. So, so uh, are you mm. eating? You're eating some, uh, some animal products now. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I think. What's your favorite animal product? Uh, steak. I'm sorry. Yeah, Steak's the that's, best. A, that's a really well. No, good here's one. the thing. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say this. I completely respect your dietary decisions. We used to be vegan at one point. Yeah, it was like six months. Yeah, yeah. It was not great. <laughs> he was like thing. vegan, and then like after a while, I was like, I guess I'm just gonna do the vegetarian. And then and it's <laughs> a slippery slope. Yeah, and then first thing, thing, you know, I'm eating taco meat. <laughs> first thing, if you're vegan and you want to eat pastries, just eat pastries. I don't like if you're gonna be vegan, be like whole food vegan. Don't like try to make pastries that aren't as good. That sucks. But the other thing is, based on my understanding, veganism doesn't actually help the environment. I get not eating animals because dogs are cute. And I love dogs, and I don't want to eat dogs. So all y'all eating dogs, stop doing that. But <laughs> other than that, that's actually uh, xenophobic, David. I didn't. You can't I didn't, tell people not to eat dogs. No. Oh God, <laughs> I don't want to be part of society anymore. <laughs> no, but uh, the I think the only solution is to be a chigan. 
to cheat when you want to eat the processed junk. But what what you're trying to say is you should do the best for your body, but you also shouldn't put string you put shouldn't put yourself inside a stringent dietary box because that like benefits no one at the end. Well, of the and day. also I just think there's a misconception about be- veganism being helpful to the environment. It's like factory farming is bad for the environment so yeah. it's not good for there to be rows that's miles the thing of is corn. that like i always eat organic grass-fed like you don't you should never eat meat from a factory yes farm. The, the, the grass-fed steak pasture raised so that's that's the solution and i gotta be sure that they've got like fun music playing yeah. at the farm <laughs> while they're grazing perfect, also if perfect. i don't if i don't eat these cows these cows are gonna eat by fucking wolves or whatever you know what i'm saying like i'm giving cow has a good life and then we just kill it peacefully at the end she had a good time you know what i'm saying if i knew i was gonna get eaten at the end and then the, my whole life i'm chilling you know i'm making beats i'm eating i'm smoking weed and then at the end somebody eats me that's a good time i have purpose a cow getting eaten by a wolf that's just such a helpless scenario that's man. way that's... sadder than dying at a farm where, I... you, where you lived with your friends your whole life certainly <laughs> but is it though because at least you know that's like the circle of life yeah. kind of the thing circle. Where... you know who's gonna oh. hate this conversation Who? moby mm. moby moby's vegan oh, you're right you're right and I'm joaquin God. moby come on the show and let's talk about it. you think moby can freestyle Mm, nah, no. mm, mm, but he's, <laughs> pretty, he's funny though okay that's good well, you know we'll, we'll send him a dm he probably won't see it but um <laughs> well you know he's into podcasting now we can get him a few pointers yeah yeah <laughs> you can have him and hunter biden oh yeah dude yo <laughs> we have, Honestly, a, we have bet, a laptop too i bet hunter biden would do great on this podcast <laughs> Just gotta feed him the right amount of I'd be like, Hey yo, so AOC's kinda hot, right? <laughs> Low key, right? Low key. Uh you said um you said you pulled back on the drinking. What's up with that? Well, you know, I used to party really hard. I mean, the, the superstar it lifestyle. comes with the territory. It yeah. does, yeah. So then I, I quit like 20 years ago. Totally sober. Totally sober. And I mean, that's why I look really young, like honestly. You do look young. Like usually they say black don't crack, but superstar don't crack. Princess superstar don't crack. I do think that that is totally true. If, if you drinking leathers you. Especially, yeah, but leather's that's why I'm, up I'm, your I'm, face. I'm glad I'm a man where le- leather actually makes me look better. You know, what that, I mean? that, that's one way to look at it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you guys are still young, you know, but I had uh, to stop. I mean, it was getting out of control. So, yeah, what was the rock bottom? Can you talk about uh, that? I love hearing about the rock bottom. Yeah. Uh, we need a wake up call. Uh, no, it was just that I was really feeling like I, in order to do anything, like I had to get fucked up. Do you know, like yeah. even yeah, like yeah. to perform or to make music or to socialize? Know. Yeah. And it's like, who wants to be a slave to that? I didn't want to be a slave. No, that makes sense. Oh, there we go. I don't want to be a slave. Yo, White I want to behave. Yeah, you know this how it is, yo. <laughs> I just want to drink, yo. But I can't do that shit because I need to get my shit together so I can survive. Woo! Every day, yeah, I wake up and I'm sitting in my home alone. Uh. Then I fucking go hang out with a couple friends and we drink Patron. Woo! Woo! They know I might find something. Then I roll it up and I start to smoke. Woo! Woo! Going down in the street, yeah, yeah. I hope they don't rob me. No, no. Yo. I am 20 years sober. Yeah, yeah. congrats. Yo, I throw it down like I'm Hova. Whoa. That's right, I just compare myself to Jay Z. Hell yeah. Do you really wanna fuck with me? No. Yo, I got my 20 year chip. Yo, I'm about to dip. Yeah, I'm on a spaceship. Yeah, you know, don't give a shit. No. Uh, mm. I'm sober as a gopher and I'm riding over. Yeah, you know, I'm over here. I slay it like I'm Hova. Hi, my name is David. I'm an I've heard it works. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to get on that 12 step shit, bro. I want to just hang out with some people. I think you just need to take 12 steps. <laughs> just take 12 steps and back up. <laughs> Fuck, dude. I, I, I met this sober dude the other day. Um, and the whole time he was he he got sober and he'd, he's been sober a year. And he lives in like a sober living thing. Uh-huh. And it's like a whole thing. To me, it's just there are degrees of, of uh, substance abuse that are so different to where it's like some people just stop drinking and that's it. Like a guy like this that has to go like live in a place yeah. for a year and get on state disability. It's like a whole thing. Whereas other people stop drinking and then they're just like, Oh, my skin looks better. You right. know what I'm saying? Right. Like it's such a different level of a problem. And it's when people say, Oh, I'm sober. You assume like, Oh, they must have been hooking in the street <laughs> to get a fix. No, that's there's a, there. Uh, uh, I, I, okay. So I, drink a lot I, I i would probably call myself an alcoholic very high but functioning but yeah. yes it, there's there's there have been times where at my lowest of the lows i've been like man what if i like 
checked out an AA meeting or something. And um, then I think about like what I've seen in movies about AA meetings. And I, and, and I think of uh, that scene in um, uh, Fight Club. No, no. What's the Dave Chappelle weed movie? Uh, Half Baked. Half Baked. Oh, Remember? Yeah. He's there for, like for for weed yeah, yeah. And people are there's like i used to suck dick for crack yeah, yeah. and that's kind of my mindset i'd go in and i'd be like uh yeah you know sometimes i wake up at nine and i feel bad about the night before but you know i still go to work and it's fine yeah, yeah. like I'm, i don't have any rot really like harsh rot sometimes i'm really mean to my co-host on my freestyle rap comedy <laughs> podcast he's been mean drunk. before <laughs> well that's the thing like it's kind of cool because it's like it doesn't you don't have to have an extreme bottom to like go get sober it's just if you want to quit that's it and you can't did you yes. do it did you do a 12-step thing or did you just well i'm not really supposed to talk about that okay that's oh. fine oh, is that a rule can we talk about like that well, aspect that, of it that's, that's you know like anonymous it's called anonymous Got so it. it's like it's like if i did maybe i did maybe i didn't so you, she's did, anonymous maybe, maybe i guess I all right it's like like the hacker group that's actually cool <laughs> it's illuminati shit dude yeah well no i do think that it, it, i would go to alcoholics anonymous if everyone there was wearing guy fox masks fuck yeah we do we do that's oh okay do. i thought you weren't supposed to talk about it Come oh, on. <laughs> Just kidding, just kidding. <laughs> no, I I just think that there's it's it is a better time in society to to uh, approach sobriety because people are more down with it and look down on it less. Like I feel like when I think about sobriety in like the '90s, I'm imagining Tony Sobrano like being like, "Hey, just have a drink with us, come on." You know what I'm saying? Like that that peer pressure bullshit. Um, of uh, I do feel bad when people are drinking, and I decide. I like that. He's, sorry, he's yeah. like clicking <laughs> open a beer. He's I, literally. I, I've switched over. Let me just let me just open my beer while this you're seems appropriate. <laughs> Uh, it's just I just want to feel better, and so that's the, those are the things that I'm thinking about to fucking change my life. No, yeah, it's, uh, I've, I've both of us have like increased our. Um, David's like measuring out all of his um, like calories, and when when he when he made his his protein shake this morning, he was like, I have to make sure there's one cup of this, and that's and good. Only, uh, this or that, and and I also in the past like eight months have started you know lifting weights or whatever. I, I got my own little home gym thing worked out, so it is kind of. We we're we both just recently entered into the 30s zone. Yeah. yeah. And I feel like that's kind of where you really do have to start taking your shit seriously. Well, along this subject, I do want to ask you about like the advice that you would give somebody who's coming up, who's independent, who's trying to make it in music. Maybe they don't suck. Like maybe they're <laughs> maybe they're good to the point where you're like, OK, this person is pretty good, but they're not successful. Mm -hmm. um, should they persist? Should they be like, fuck it? Or what are like some talk tracks that you could feed somebody in their brain to be like, hey, it's okay to not give up and keep going and make it happen. Yeah, I think like you have to follow your passion and your joy. I mean, like, for example, you guys are so funny and you're so, it's so clearly like what you love to do. So you have to keep going, keep doing it and like invest in it. And I mean, don't spend all your money on sure. it, right? Like that's crazy. Like you don't ever want to just like go broke doing your We art. We finally finished paying off all the equipment. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So it's like, you know, you invest a little, but you're smart, you know? And it's like, if you have to work another job, work another job. I had to work another job, even though I was like, famous for the 2000s you know what i mean so like i but i just kept doing my shit because i had to do it and it seems like you guys <laughs> motivation you gotta motivate hustle and motivate yo you know i cannot hate oh i'm over here with princess superstar today yeah and you know that this episode finna be great uh yeah when i want to drink i resist and when i want to give up i persist uh yeah and i must insist when I'm fucking spitting on the shits. Yo, I'm kinda like Tony Robbins. Oh. I know most artists be starving, but that's okay, cause you know, we keep it on lock. And I like to ride my husband's cock. Whoa, <laughs> that's a pretty sexual. That's how it is, yo. You know, that's detestable. This is a family show. We got kids watching at home. Yo, this is Dome. The kids that watch this are probably in foster care. Sorry. And their absent parents do not care because they let them watch literally anything regardless of it being explicit. The problem is cock rhymes with everything as no, yeah, well. It's like whore, one. cock, yeah. cock, cock, lock, dog. Yeah, pop, top, uh, parking lot, Stop. pot. Whore cock. We have a, whoa. That, that's wow. the next, the next that's single. A, that's the name of my rock band. Whore cock. <laughs> 
We're yeah. Horcock. We're going to be here all week. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck is up, Denny's? We're Horcock. It's a belly. Yeah. Performing at a Denny's is, is, the, is the bottom. At the Whiskey Go-Go. Um, we do have a, um, a crutch jar that we, we don't have on the table right now. But Are you saying you need to contribute to no, that? No, no, no. I, thought, saying, I, I think we've been doing no, pretty no, good. No, no. She's been you know, bringing attention to oh. the fact that there are words that are, yes. do tend, tend to be crutches. And beca- huh. because of our consistent, you know, rigorous effort in this in this show, we've unfortunately developed small crutches. And honestly, since we've introduced the crutch jar, we've gotten a lot better because we're um, minimal contribution to the crutch jars. You may notice. Yes. Uh, so although, wait, what, what is? I don't understand. So, so like uh, words that you always use. We we often make things gay. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So then it's like easy, uh, yeah. gay That's and the go-to. gay and day and say and slay. Yeah. Um, and then we also swear. cock cock it could be one maybe for you. And then um, <laughs> <laughs> I'll just put a quarter in there. Yeah. We ran out of quarters. Oh, really yeah. what it is. <laughs> we can't contribute because of our financial situation. Uh, yeah, David just did laundry. So he's all out of quarters. <laughs> but I have boxers. <laughs> No, um, and uh, yeah, swearing excessively is is that that's the main one that especially when I'm in the edit bay and I'm trying to put together the the freestyle for the week or whatever. I'm like, man, it's like every other word I said was fuck or shit, and I'm like, this is not creative <laughs> at all. So um, we introduced the crutch jar. So we got to. So we're working smart. on our life. I like that. We just got to go to the bank and, and get some change. Yes. Uh, I had uh, David borrowed quarters from me the other week. So <laughs> I, he, I'm in debt. For laundry <laughs> or yeah. what? No, no. Yeah, for, no the, for the jar. He owes me like he, like 50 cents at least. He's wearing my socks right now. Am I really? Well, no. He's I just oh, okay. laundry. <laughs> <laughs> I might be, though. I've used to. He, we used to live together and. Randomly, I would get a lot of his socks just because they would end up in my laundry, and I'd just be like, "Well, these are mine now." It's a deep bond we've. Yeah, it's like it's like boyfriends. Uh, We used to share the same toothbrush, but it it was an we shared the electric base of the toothbrush. Yeah, yeah, we 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 had had our own tips. We had our own tips that we would transfer and and put the music on. (laughs) That is actually. I think people should hear that and be inspired, you know, because right. I, that's I think, love. Yeah. If I, you share the base, you're it's love. Right. It's not. Yeah. You know, we're not. I could. I totally if you're sharing an actual toothbrush, even if you're married with kids with this person, you shouldn't be sharing. You're a toothbrush despicable. With them. Yeah, that's yeah. disgusting. But <laughs> like we're just touching the we're just gripping the same shaft, you know what I'm saying? And there's nothing gay about gripping the same shaft. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> gay. I must say, your husband's a down-ass fool. We've been saying the most uh, absurd <laughs> shit. He loves it. Um, what about uh, producers? Are you producing? Are you working with certain people more than others? Or is it just, are you are you randomly finding beats? What's I the used process? to produce, but like I, I found that I wasn't that good at it, so I just leave it to people that are better at it. Yeah. So um, I'm working with different different people actually after this i'm about to go work with this guy max margo and he like produced like post malone and like all these big people Whoa, and i'm sort sick. of like nervous and i'm like i'm not really big like i don't know how to do that Pop no that, that's kind of exciting kind of, yeah. you 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 went to like an enormous show today and then now you're going to work with an enormous producer exactly yeah so. you know, I, which, one, which one is the peak who knows what is i don't know i fucking love this stuff so i yeah. i love post malone so i'm a i'm a really big fan of of at least like the first three albums yeah, it was mm-hmm. cool seeing him uh, on the on the uh, the Super Bowl. What he didn't actually it wasn't the halftime show. It was something else. Right? No, no, he, he sang uh, he America sang. the Beautiful, which you know what? God bless that. Man. I think it's, it's, speaking on post specifically, it, it goes to show the opportunity that there is in music nowadays for fucking authenticity. Mm-hmm. And I think that you tap into that a lot because people are tired of hearing the same shit. They they are. They so, want to know about Costco. They, they want wanna- to. <laughs> You know? I want to I want to ask about that. Are you just randomly filming yourself in Costco in front of all these people? And saying, oh, okay. Yeah. I'm yeah. in Costco acting crazy. Uh. Sorry I interrupted you, guest lady. Uh, I've been doing that lately because I'm a fucking misogynist piece of shit. Yo, I like to buy in bulk. Woo. I'm like the mom Incredible Hulk Whoa. carrying 30 toilet papers. Cause you know I'm always making paper uh, Yeah, I'm rapping in the middle of Costco But what at what cost, yo? I'm over <laughs> here with my phone on a tripod in the zone And there's people running around and roaming I'm incredibly passionate about the Price Club I wish I could find owners and give them a hug But they probably are like a group of executives They're not the best at it I know, I should probably buy small Probably 
But you know, I don't care at all. Because uh-huh. when you're a mom and you're singing a song, you got to shop very big. Shop big. <laughs> that was bad. That's what I said. No. Nothing's <sighs> bad. You know, it's just Freestyling is a, it gives you anxiety. It's a spectrum. <laughs> There's a spectrum of freestyling. Often what I do is I abandon rhyming and then just try to say um, just facts. Oh. And, and then if you speak like oddly factual things, it's like... That's the, a crutch. No, no. I think it's You got to put a quarter okay, in for that one. I, you know, I've never been good at freestyling, so, you know... You did pretty good. Uh, yeah, you no, had some every, good ones. I think as far as... I had a couple good ones, yeah. I guess. It's a numbers game. Yeah, it is. I hope you put the best ones. No, no, we, no, we certainly will. The the people who are bad at freestyling just don't even attempt it because they know. They, would, they know that it would just bring it to a complete halt and we've had that before yeah and that's and- <laughs> yeah. it's funny because like i get anxiety but at the same time i love it like it's fun because i like challenges you know and this is like a challenge and it's fun i i'm just impressed that like you knew to wait till like you knew when it was your time to rap we got some sometimes we'll have oh. dudes on here that are just they like will just start i'm i'm obviously rapping right now man <laughs> like, what are you stop. like <laughs> no yeah that, that. i think that's just like an artist thing like you understand music in a way or like you, yeah. you you're counting the bar subconsciously you're yeah, like, right. yeah the rhythm. Like that, that part i can do but like the rhyming like making it end with a good punchline i get so much anxiety like my song bad babysitter it took me like 10 drafts to write that that was a hit in 2001 no that's a that's a cool that's a cool song and video some shirtless man in that one my i add oh yeah mark the 45 Five King, rest in peace. R. Like R. he's R. he R. was he was shirtless in that one. Her boyfriend's black in that video, so progressive <laughs> twenty years ago. Well, m- like my husband says, once you go black, you do go- come back because yeah. he's Latino. Every so now and yeah, then. yeah, every now and then. Ipso facto, you <laughs> know. The, the Latinos are dark, you know, in the summer. <laughs> That's what I told him. Apparently I said, "You're a people la- of color." <laughs> Certainly. <laughs> I, um, I, I, we mentioned we talked about this briefly at the beginning of the podcast maybe this would be a good thing to close on i i want to uh you it sounded like maybe there was some controversy on the perfect music video mm. um and i was wondering if you're able to speak on that sure at all because i'm i'm curious i make music videos so i'm interested in the that that aspect of it for sure and like if so yeah, yeah. Wanna, let's, let's so get the, the tea. The year was 2006, and Ministry of Sound had signed this record, Perfect Exceder, and it was a huge hit in England. It was like number three on the pop charts. And in the contract, it was like, we'll give you this money, and we'll give you creative control over your video and all this stuff. And I was like, okay, cool. And because I had I had already been established, like, because I had Bad Babysitter was also a hit, was number 11 on the charts. So it's not like I was like nobody, whatever, without a brand or whatever, sure. or a look. And so they um, anyways, they made this video without even asking me. And I found out about it on a then new YouTube like that was a new thing. YouTube. Oh, my God. And I put it on and I was like, what in the actual fuck? These models are like lip syncing my song. Like, I don't understand what's happening. And I called up the head of the label crying and like, what the fuck, dude? And like, it didn't stop there. They sent those models on tour as like Princess Superstar Club Night. It was so weird. That is fucked up. Well, did yeah. did you get a piece? So I did get royalties and everything, um, but for the club thing, we shut that down immediately. We're like cease and desist. So like you know, because it's like okay. I'm a touring artist. Man, it's wild that they even thought that they had grounds to do that. Well, in I the think first place. I think labels yeah. did reckless shit like that early 2000s and before they did, they did. because artists didn't have a voice. They didn't we didn't have, have social media. It yeah. was MySpace. What am I going to do like on MySpace? Like I, there, there was nothing to do. You, you didn't have do- the reach that you have. You couldn't put them on blast. Right. I got to so, figure out the name of that lady that was replaced. It was the same thing happened to you. The uh, injustice. Yeah. Is it is it Crystal Waters? That actually, Miguel that sounds, might know. That sounds familiar. Let that me read you good. some producers really quick while you uh, while yeah. you look that up. Uh, the people that made the beats this week. Banknotes by Lethal Needle, Tipsy by Piper Beats, Bust a Flow by Son of the Machine, Do Better by Manuel, Two Step by 18, Come Closer by George Simmons, Smoke Session by Lex Factor, Population by Scratch, May Not Be by Bailey Daniel, Keep Going by That Kid Goran, and Vent by K English Unlocked. Oh, there's some dope beats in there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Our, David's the uh, beat picker. He's the master selector, and he knows how to pick them. We all, always get good producers. Yeah. Her name was Martha Wash. And, um, um, yeah, Martha so, Walsh. Maybe, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if this was a spelling error. Oh, um, <laughs> sounds like maybe. Okay, but, but like, yeah, no, was apparently she, she was replaced in multiple music videos mm-hmm. by just a thinner, more attractive, mm-hmm. like, woman. Damn. Uh, it's Raining Men was one of them. Uh. Gonna Make You Sweat, Strike It Up. 
Oh. Yeah, no, it's apparently that shit happened. And yeah, it's fucked up. That's well, I mean, so good weird. company then. But you know, what's amazing is that now, 17 years later, I have a platform and I can tell my story. Oh, yeah. It's really cool. And I love that. And also, I think, it, you know, I do want to say people fucking love that video. They love it. It's not anything I would make personally. I'm more like of a punk rock underground person. But people love the video. So I don't want to take it away from them either. It, it, it's I never actually watched the video. I will admit. I just saw that it was uh there it's it's like some aerobic shit right yeah. did you sort of replicate it in the in the video that you did recently good ding 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 you get bonus points Ooh, that's right he's, he does the research if, if <laughs> i just right. look good i it felt like it, well I, I did a nod to it i, I put it in uh, get an older pussy still pop where i'm on the exercise ball yes with two girls dressed as grandmas because i want to celebrate aging for women no i think it, it is a it is a great thing i and like that it's, also, and it's also kind of like your way of of taking that back too yes, i yes. think that that's cool also aging in hip-hop which a lot of us uh, like have felt like oh you can't be like over 30 and rap or whatever right and that's obviously not the case when you kill see a mic kill a mic yeah, yeah winning, winning these grammys and then obviously you're over here doing your thing and um still looking young as hell so go go listen to uh princess superstar and uh Go to patreon.com forward slash. You can listen to Perfect if you want, of course. Yeah, but she's but got like, other songs, you guys. <laughs> keep keep an eye on on her music and the catalog. Go through the catalog. But go to patreon.com forward slash Dome with Banfomania if you want to get early access to episodes, bonus content, or if you just want to support what we're doing. This is all out of our own pockets. And like and subscribe on YouTube if you want to fucking, you know, just help us out a little bit. Um, what should the people keep an eye out for? Renegades coming out. Anything else that you want the people to see or follow? No. Cool. <laughs> Hell yeah. Fuck it. Well, we, we appreciate you being on. We know it's a hike from Santa Monica, so we're really thankful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, thanks um, so much. Maybe it we'll was fun. You yeah. guys are awesome. Appreciate Hell it. Yeah. Maybe we'll do it again sometime. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. Bye, guys. Bye.